Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. This is the round of 16 and we are going to have a match today in a best of three between, on the blue side, Amazon Prime. Amazon, of course, allows you to buy things online like this fabulous mic in which I'm speaking with and they are playing for Child's Play. Child's Play is a charity that brings children in hospitals and domestic abuse centers the joy of gaming help them reconnect with their childhood a bit, get back uh, in tune with being a kid again and being able to enjoy their life and not have to worry uh, about some of the traumatic things they've been through. So fantastic charity there. And they are playing against, on the red side, Intel. Of course, Intel, one of the world's largest chip manufacturers, uh, most well known, of course, for their processors. Uh, I am scandalously not running an Intel processor. I have an AMD, so aha, I have bias against Intel. <laughs> um, but yeah, Intel, of course, very uh, infamous for that. They are going to be playing for the United Way of Columbia Willamette, which is uh, my, sp my city's specific chapter. Uh, and they work on uh, three goals to try and prevent childhood poverty, uh, successful students through a strong educational foundation, uh, and stable families by creating a stable foundation at home for people. And I actually botched this a little bit because those are three goals to prevent childhood poverty. Let me explain that one more time so I don't get this wrong here. <laughs> um, so the way they try and prevent childhood poverty is first through successful students, so making sure that uh, every kid has a strong educational foundation through uh, stable families because of course if you're not if you don't have a stable home life as a student, you're not going to be able to actually learn because uh, you're not going to be able to come home and do the homework to be able to learn the material. And uh, if you have troubles at home, that's going to make you overall less effective as a student. And through uh, connected communities, which is trying to build networks of community, community support for these students in um, some of the rougher parts of the city. So a uh, great charity. I know from firsthand they do a lot of great work out here, so uh, I'm always glad to see that. And I, uh, you know, they do great things, so I hope that, uh, they get some, uh, prize pool money. Not gonna lie. Now, all of a sudden, a little bias in favor of Intel. <laughs> but as we see the timer, uh, tick out here as we get into our three-minute grace period for the delay, let's, uh, review the pick-ban phase here for both of these teams. We, of course, saw, uh, the first pick, or the, uh, bans being Jinx, Caitlyn, and Kale coming out from this blue side. Uh, of course... We, we were thinking about initially uh, perhaps trying to target ban out uh, the champion pool excuse me, of the AD carry for the red side here as of course Jinx and Caitlyn, two of the more frequently picked champions on that side. Um, and we were wondering if we were going to see another, a third ban come out uh, against them, possibly a Lucian, possibly a Sivir, possibly an Ash, things that uh, are known to come out of this red side team here. Uh, but actually that isn't what they opted for. They opted to finish out the bands with a Kale. Kale, definitely a champion uh, that has been uh, coming out of uh, this top laner, I believe. Let me check to make sure I'm not saying the wrong thing. I do believe it's the top laner who's been going Kale. Oh, my notes are so disorganized. Yes, in fact, it is the top laner. Um, so, to see uh, the Kale coming out on occasion... Or excuse me, no. It is the mid laner. Haha! <laughs> I'm glad I checked like three times. So Agrol, um, who has gone top previously, which was the confusion to me, um, he uh, definitely busts out the Kale in both top and mid lane. So that Kale is definitely a target ban at him in some respect there, since Kale is somebody we don't see in the meta uh, currently, not because she's not strong, but just because she's not the flavor of the month. Uh, people have sort of lost their touch of playing against her and if somebody you get somebody on a kale who knows how to use her ultimate at the exact right moment not to save someone but to block out tons of initial damage that in and of itself can swing an entire team fight so definitely a very respectful ban there on the kale coming out from this blue side and on the red side we see gragas morgana and sivir uh the one i want to touch on most is the final sivir ban um uh some strong confidence in their champion pool for the red side's 80 carry uh to ban out sivir in lieu of saying you know we think 
you throwing out those two bands already is going to hurt your AD Carries champion pool more than ours, so we're banning out the Sivir. Uh, but I was a little interested in why they chose Sivir specifically, because Sivir definitely is a champion um, that we don't see coming out too much out of HGAL, the AD Carry for the blue side here. So that was an interesting choice, but a, a good test. Sivir, of course, very strong right now with Hecarim open, as we saw Hecarim being picked up uh, on this blue side, that Sivir probably would have been locked in. So perhaps uh, it was something to do with having the Hecarim open, not wanting to put their top laner on it. So banning out the Sivir to make sure that Hecarim can't go out of control insane here. Um, and really test the depths of the champion pool for both AD carries here. And we did end up seeing um, some interesting pickups. Of course, we see L Lucian, definitely somebody uh, who we see coming out of this blue side fairly frequently. Uh, but Tristana, somebody we don't see as often anymore since her rework, but is very dangerous, especially uh, when we get to the part of the game where we're uh, juggling around our positions here and going from one turret to another. Tristana almost, I mean, in my opinion, has become the premier turret destroyer. Perhaps even over Jinx, which I know is heresy to say. But with the explosive charge she can now throw onto those turrets, charge up and get so much bonus damage onto them. She can absolutely just chew through turrets like it's nothing. Um, so we'll see what sort of plays are going to be coming out uh, from this red side team. I mean, notably, when you've got that Zed in the mid lane, you're going to have to make sure that that uh, Cho'Gath does fairly well. Because Cho'Gath is going to be bringing uh, your entire magic damage for the whole uh, team here. So if they want to make sure that they actually threaten... Uh, some magic damage to make sure that they can't just itemize against the Zed and the Tristana. They're going to want to uh, give some attention to that uh, Cho'Gath early on here, get him going, make sure he's a little bit ahead in the build. And even if he goes the more standard, of course, uh, tanky Cho'Gath, he'll still be bringing a good chunk of magic damage to that. And good ward immediately, not even going to walk to the Pixel Brush, going to just ward it as soon as she's in range, so Vi spots out. Uh, what could have been a possible invade here, and now uh, looks like this red side is going to be forced to think better of it, uh, as the line of scrimmage wards have already been thrown down here, as we see uh, plenty of vision here on the blue side. Lucian having a good time, throwing his smiley face down. Yeah, so not too much action here. We might see a little poke and back and forth. Unfortunately, not going to be able to get that ward. It is Shogath. But some good line, line of scrimmage wards down. No key vision really for either side yet. It looks like we are going to have standard lanes this matchup. We'll see what Lucian uh, and Thresh are able to get down done in that bottom lane. As we're going to be seeing uh, Hooks Galore here in the bottom lane with that Nautilus and Thresh both occupying the bot lane here. We'll see... Uh, who's going to be a little bit more on point, who's got the better responses here, and we'll see, perhaps most keyly, if we're going to have a, uh, an early level 2 engagement come out here. As the word from the block might actually discourage this Cho'Gath here. Uh, let's actually look back here. The Blanc is waiting right around here to try and see if she can get this kill on Cho'Gath. She does get the damage, so she picks up the 3 CS for herself. And forces that Cho'Gath to go back after taking that damage. If he uh, risks dying to that, he'll of course give the credit of the kill over to that LeBlanc. Simply dying to the camp. So, going to be forced to back. So, a very good uh, play there from LeBlanc to waste that Cho'Gath's time. Whereas, Hecarim able to start out at their Razor Beaks. No problem there. The Raptors going down. Definitely going to be a huge advantage for that Hecarim early on. Already at level 2, Cho'Gath going to... Have to struggle a bit, and you know, that's what we were talking about earlier when we uh, were first getting into this game here. Uh, if they want to make sure that they aren't itemized against uh, armor and have that take care of uh, sort of all their problems here on the blue side, they're going to need to make sure that uh, Cho'Gath actually becomes a threat. So having LeBlanc spend the extra second or two to make sure that Cho'Gath is behind in lane, definitely a, a worthwhile play there. You see Hecarim doing his best to shove those minions into that turret. Put a little bit of extra pressure on the Cho'Gath who does have a little trouble last hitting under turret here. 
So it certainly can be done if you juggle those uh, E's on and off. But certainly not the easiest thing to do. See LeBlanc looking to get a little bit of poke down. Not really too much happening, of course. Is that opting to start uh, with that long sword here in the mid lane? Oh, and ha the uh, uh, hook there from Nautilus actually going right over Thresh's shoulder, and that's going to mean overall a favorable trade here for the blue side in the bottom lane. Unfortunately, Thresh able to land all of his shots there and getting quite a bit of time bought for the Lucian uh, to put out a lot of damage there. Unfortunately, the Lucian taking a free turret shot there, going to. Uh, even up those health bars a little bit here. So the Relic Shield passives coming in for both those uh, sides are going to make them nice and healthy here. Give them a little bit of extra sustain. Is he not too explosive? Well, right as I say that, we actually see going aggressive here is as we found it charges up all the way onto Thresh, who actually uses that uh, hook to jump away and he flashes bringing Lucian with him, but that's not going to be enough. Lucian forced to flash as well. Thresh had to go back into flame away, but that actually is going to be enough to get them out of there alive. Beautiful play by the Thresh, throwing that lantern out and flashing as soon as it was grabbed by Lucian to take him for the ride. And the game sense to go back in and flay uh, at the risk of his own life, but having confidence in his tankiness early on here. And now Lucian and Thresh able to hang out in this lane even further. Uh, going to take a little bit of extra damage here on Thresh. Uh, but that's not going to be too consequential here overall. Still fairly even in the bottom lane despite that gank from the red side here. Seeing uh, fairly even lanes right now, uh, aside from this bottom lane. Uh, you know, Cho'Gath, despite coming in with that disadvantage because of the little Blanc shenanigans at the Razorbeak camp here, um, he is he has evened this lane up quite a bit. A, only a few CS discrepancy now between those two top laners. Uh, but the key uh, difference right now is, of course, in this bottom lane, the Lucian to Tristana right now, 40 to 24. I mean, uh, absolute nightmare uh, for this red side bot lane. Uh, they're going to have to get some more attention from their jungler if they're going to want to make some plays here. So far, those Thresh, uh, right as we say that, of course, Thresh landing a hook there right onto a minion. But uh, so far, the Thresh hooks have been really on point, landing a lot of that CC at a perfectly timed uh, opportunity there. And that's created a huge advantage despite... Uh, the only gank of the game heading over there. And actually, that's going to be Vi jumping into Sejuani. Actually going to get the small crud there and force Sejuani away. As we're seeing, possibly a look at it, a dive in the top lane, but Vi going to walk away. And Tristana actually caught up by the Thrush, and then the hook in by Nala is not going to be enough. The rocket jump away going to keep Tristana safe here. But that's an early back by Tristana and Vi. Just barely uh, misses the Sejuani there. Hanging around, trying to be as much of a pest in that jungle. Of course, uh, Vi, with a 13-14 uh, CS lead right now. And in the jungle, that is a huge difference. So, absolutely able to go in Sejuani's jungle and just bully her out. Hecarim, uh of course, seeing the charge of the feast is now down. Gonna come in and throw a little harass on the Cho'Gath. No, he doesn't have to worry about that true damage to Blanche. He's going to be just fine here. Well, he does need to be a little careful as uh, Hecarim does have that level advantage still showing through every now and again. Now, evening that up is Cho'Gath here. Uh, Cho'Gath definitely, of course, has that sustain, so Tony not looking to go super aggressive here. Actually, opting to not go directly to that Shadow you know, when he was standing in the minions was egg roll, so not too concerned about the chains coming out of LeBlanc there. Opting to get a couple extra autos in when he had the chance. He's taken quite low though, so we need to keep an eye on that mid lane as of course Sejuani is going to be arriving there for a little extra coverage. And just 
Stana forced to rock and jump away there. Now will be Zed going back here. Got it. Very, very respectful of the damage LeBlanc can bring out here. Unfortunately, you're just looking very briefly uh, at the level for that Sejuani. Level 4 right now. I mean, that's less than the duo lane. That's very painful. That's a uh, very good uh, way to show the difference here in these two junglers. Vi, only level 6 right now. Uh, <laughs> but I say only uh, as in... Uh, you know, some of these. She's not blowing everybody else out of the water by any means. But that Sejuani is so far behind. Had to be up against that um, vine or jungle, as we were seeing earlier. Is why that's going to be such a bullying matchup. As we see the Flash Feast here. Not actually going to get the kill with it, but he will with the following up auto attacks here. As that's first blood onto a solo kill in the top lane for... Uh, this Cho'Gath here. Do have to question a little bit uh, the use of that flash there. It seems like with the amount of time that knockup was lasting that he probably would have been able to simply uh, walk up and get that feast, get a couple extra autos in and finish him off. Uh, but good good use of that flash to secure the kill and make sure that uh, he doesn't get away at the end. And secure that first blood for his team. Uh, but that will be Vi here, sneaking over, taking that uh, dragon here. So first dragon of the game does go over to the blue side. And they are getting uh, something in the meantime. All this uh, engagement breaks out here in the mid lane. The chain's going to proc onto Zed. That's going to be the second chain, but he will ultimate away from them. And there's a death mark, and that's not going to be enough despite the ignite. That uh, CC from the Vi's ultimate will prevent any extra damage from being stacked onto that death mark, and that will be a kill onto Vi. Assist credit to LeBlanc, and now kill scores even up one to one in that first blood advantage. Not showing through here in the overall gold. So we're seeing Hecarim with that Sheen throwing out those cues to get that extra damage on those auto attacks as much as he can here. Looking to trade a lot more favorably here with this Cho'Gath as Nautilus uh, hooking that wall there a little bit too uh, quick with his uh, fingers there. Jumping over to a different part of the screen a little bit quickly. But Cho'Gath not turn, shying away from a fight here. Knows he has that sustain in his passive, so gonna be content to opt for some trades every now and again to try and Keep that Hecarim low as he possibly can here, though. Hecarim gonna be forced off that pink board mom momentarily here. So Vi is in tow in that top lane, so they are going to be able to clear out that pink board. Chain's, of course, missing on the block there, so Zed's gonna be perfectly fine in the mid lane. Certainly does need to respect that the Blanc now, though. Uh, as she is stacking up the Seeker's arm guard right now. And Thresh is hooked here! A lot of damage onto that Nautilus, but uh, here's Sejuani gonna dash out of the ultimate. Beautiful dash from Lucian, and here's the fadeaway Coling getting the whole pulling out onto them. And that lantern from Thresh gonna keep, or excuse me, the hook from Thresh gonna keep that in range for the Hecarim Fear. Hecarim getting down the very low Nautilus, and then Tristana nowhere to run. Sejuani blown up by the LeBlanc who came in, in addition to that Hecarim. And all of a sudden, this game is cracked wide open in favor of the blue side here. As they take their first turret of the game, extending that gold lead now to nearly 4k out of nowhere. This game has absolutely erupted in favor of this Amazon Prime team here. You can see some deep wards. Coming out in the jungle on their way out of here as well. Gonna pick up that Scuttlecraft for a little extra vision here. And now with that bottom lane freed up for some roaming, this Zed needs to be careful here. Uh, LeBlanc, now 1-0-2. Definitely something to be respected on her own now, but you're gonna see uh, Zed, as we see right now, farming with those Qs to make sure he maintains a very good distance from that LeBlanc. We're going to see a lot more of that Zed 
uh, until they get some vision at least around that part of the uh, jungle, they're going to need to keep them back, farming with those Qs, staying safe as much as possible here. And a great dodge of the chain there, but the second chain gonna be enough. The uh, hook from Thresh going wide, but that's the hook from Nautilus connecting. The death mark is on the Thresh. He's going to be safe as he's very far back, but there's the turret shot. It's gonna finish off the Vi. One for one so far. Zed for Vi. And overall, uh, an even trade here. But it looks like the Red Side's gonna be looking to try and make more of this. Possibly take a turret in this mid lane if they can force it, but uh, I do think they're going to have to be pretty careful here as this top lane is getting a little bit bullied. Uh, it is only LeBlanc, but that LeBlanc, 103, definitely something to be respected here. Level 10, two levels above anybody else in this area right now. And there's the damage coming out. So I'm wanting to charge in to actually miss that LeBlanc as she's a little bit too quick with those uh, Qs to jump right back to where she came from. Now it looks like gonna give up on the siege here. Got a little bit of damage, what they could on that turn. And here comes the pony, actually forcing the flash out of that Hecarim. Wasn't quite sure where the Vi was, if there was a jungler in tow waiting to follow up with a little extra CC here. So gonna be safe and burn the flash, but that is flash for an ultimate in the top lane. So Choyak gonna have to be careful now. Willing to come right back out to meet Hecarim in the middle of the lane here. Could be something that's punishable if uh, Chogat doesn't start to play a little bit safer here. And Zed will be making out all oh, the max range of the Q, just barely not enough here. And Zed gonna make it out of there uh, with a free turret kill. Good rotation there by Zed and <laughs> cheeky play by that Tristana trying to sneak that Gromp into her uh, purse there but not quite going to be able to make it as by looking to clear out this ward right before this dragon starts up here. Unfortunately, that is another ward thrown down. They are going to spot it though, so Thresh happily sweep that right on out. Now LeBlanc looking to try and chunk out the Zed before this fight, trying to uh, neutralize this Zed, make sure he can't come into this fight if uh, either of these mid laners is not allowed to participate here. That's going to spell essentially the dragon over to the other side. So, looks like Scuttlecrab will be going over to the blue side, so they will have that speed shrine available, that uh, permanent vision. LeBlanc missing those chains there, so is that going to be okay? Uh, but we do see Hecarim wearing down that top lane. All five members of the red side are here, but that does give Hecarim time to wear down that top lane turret. So, if they're going to want to start something, they need to start it now. Unfortunately, LeBlanc too easy to get out of there uh, with those hops and with that uh, Thresh Lantern. But that will be the engagement starting off the ultimate from Zed now down, not doing any work onto that LeBlanc who simply jumped away. And no, oh no, the dragon resetting. Oh, disaster for this red side here. The dragon resetting should already be down at this point. But now the pony, no vision on the Hecarim. They don't know where he is, they don't feel safe. Thresh, unfortunately, hooking the blue. <laughs> Not going to find the champion he was looking for there. And LeBlanc looking to actually go big here. Going to be forced to use that ultimate to jump back away. Now, will be blue buff onto Zed. No dragon secured for either side yet. No, it's not the one they're really looking for. He is low enough to force the flash out, though. And actually, Vi going to be going deep. Smites them and then takes the lantern ride back out. Going to clear out the pink ward on the way, too. So, good grab there from Vi. Having no hesitation there to go under the turret, trusting her damage. Of course, she has gone with the warrior enchantment and is going up into that trinity force. So, to be able to follow up uh, that ultimate with an auto... Pop another E to get the auto on the uh, Sheen for both of those. Going to be able to do quite a bit of damage there. And damage by is something you absolutely have to respect. And Zed, looking for the kill on the Blanc. Probably won't be able to find it though. Will sidestep the kill from, or the Q from Thresh. And the Ignite not going to be enough here. As the Blanc will mosey on back to base. And here we go, LeBlanc now 2-0-3. Oh, 
going to uh, come back to base here, either pick up that rod or even finish that Zonia's. Uh, might not actually have enough gold for either. Gonna opt to just upgrade the boots and get some more pots. And now we see in the bottom lane, despite no kills to either AD carry, uh, the Infinity Edge already completed, whereas not even all the ingredients available for Tristana. Uh, as that farm discrepancy has gone up now to uh, 50 minions. Absolutely insane discrepancy here in the bot lane. So we got, ooh, we're gonna miss that Q. Unfortunately there, the pony is a little speedy for him. Already, of course, has those uh, home guard boots for if he needs to come back in for a uh, teleport game here. So with the Nautilus in tow, that's actually going to force the ultimate. Speedy Pony is speedy, so he's going to get away just fine. But definitely uh, worth the time of the Nautilus there to force that ultimate out. And Zed going to step away from the... No, actually going to go all in right as the chains are about to prop there with the death mark. And the uh, Hex Drinker are going to give him enough shield to survive that. There's a smite on the Nautilus, actually going to force him to go north here, but Cho'Gath is there, will force him away, saves that Nautilus. No, because Vi cues in and then throws down the ultimate, punishing that Nautilus multiple times that way. And now that is going to be the flash from Sugwani. No, the pulling and the little blonde going to be enough to finish him off. And now this game has been blown out of control in favor of this Amazon Prime team. Funnily enough, still Lucian with no kills. But everybody else on this team is getting absolutely insane. The 008 Thresh, the 2 1 and 1 Hecram, the 4 1 and 1 Vi, the 3 0 and 4 LeBlanc. This is starting to look like a very tricky game for this red side if they want to get back involved in this. As with this turret going down, we will now see an 8k, 9k almost gold lead in favor of Amazon Prime here on the blue side. You know, the most unfortunate thing about having uh, a gold deficit here at this point in the game is because it's really eating away the time of, at which Zed can be most effective here. That zone is almost completed for LeBlanc, as we see now with that Needless Lugar draw. going to be an easy pickup on her next back to get that, so she can use that stasis to dodge the death mark. Uh, Lucian is going to be ever closer to getting that QSS now, that he's been farming himself on up here. Again, highest CS in the game, almost only tied with Hecarim here. Statistically tied here. Way outpacing the Tristana, and he's going to be nice and safe uh, sooner rather than later here. And that's going to be the only real target here um, for this Zed, as Hecarim looking to get tankier with that uh, those armor items, starting to come in the Glacial Shroud coming up here to the frozen heart uh, inevitably and Vi gonna be looking to transition into full tank mode here now after she's got that trinity force completed in addition to that warrior enchantment uh, unless if we see just yolo pure damage Vi here coming out um, we're most likely going to see a Vi that's gonna be looking to get super tanky after this and there's Nautilus hooked again it will cost him his life again as LeBlanc was in the area. That's just too much damage from a damage by in a LeBlanc. Absolutely nothing you can do as Nautilus, despite how tanky you are, um, just has, uh, doesn't even have the face of the mountain completed, just has the Moby boots with home guard and a couple of cloth armors to try and keep himself healthy here. And Thresh not able to find that uh, hook onto Zed here. As Hakarum looking to get a little aggressive here, kind of zoned out there, but we'll just take a little bit of damage on the way and walk out. Joe actually looking to try and get a nice ultimate there, but there's an ultimate from side one coming out, and it does land on multiple people, but Vi coming in, there's still too much damage here. There's a lot of AoE! This is the fight that the red side needs! There's the resets for Tristan, and she's looking for more. I'm not sure she's going to be able to find it, though. There's pings coming out on Lucian here. Fading away the rest of the team, there's the fadeaway Culling. Gonna be content to sort of just poke that um, Nautilus on his way out here as LeBlanc looking to clear out that ward and then just jump away here, get back into base. So the red side, that was definitely a fight they needed. Did only get two kills for it, but absolutely two critical kills as Lucian making sure uh, they are punished somewhat here as he picks up that blue buff for free.
But still, just like that, I mean, the red side, if they can make that happen a couple more times, uh, two for zeros are going to get you back in this game very quick here. You just need a couple good engagements in that jungle. Try and find uh, opportunities to use that AoE as much as possible. Use the Se Land the Sejuani ultimate as well as they did there. Uh, actually get some AoE from Zed as opposed to just single target damage purely here. Um, but yeah, as we now look at the items, we do see that Zoni's Hourglass now completed for LeBlanc. So LeBlanc gonna no longer be an available target for this Zed here. And we see the Vi and the Hecarim starting to get tanky. Vi a little bit more vulnerable right now than uh, the Hecarim. So perhaps the Vi would also be an acceptable death mark target here. Uh, as she's looking to itemize a bit more MR and uh, not as much health or armor quite yet. Which is certainly nice to see. Uh, I mean... Choga, with that raw rage is completed and stacking now, it is now fully stacked actually. Um, so, gonna be putting out a reasonable amount of damage, especially now that he's got the uh, needlessly large rod just sitting there. Looks like that will be the third dragon of the game, uncontested here for the blue side. And now, with that third damage, Pony's gonna be even more dangerous, and LeBlanc forced to hop away there. As Zed did not have that ultimate available, so was not able to death mark out of that second chain proc. So good coordination from the rest of his team there to force that LeBlanc away, make sure that they can save their comrade here in Zed in the mid lane. As we see, poor Zed actually doesn't have a single completed item right now. I mean, he does have tier two boots here, but uh, hook on to Thrush. Not sure that's the one they, or excuse me, hook on to Cho. Not sure that's the one they want. Joe is opting, of course, to go for those cooldown boots to try and get a little bit more utility out of his kit here a little bit more frequently. Aside from the uh, Nautilus and the Sejuani, not too much uh, potential here from the kit. And with those long cooldowns of Cho got definitely an advisable build there. So we see Akram looking to actually hold that thought because Tristana is going to be followed up. That will definitely be Tristana going down. And Sejuani lands a beautiful ultimate on the three remaining members. But there's no one there to follow up. And Sejuani realizes, oh god, three members just came out of my ultimate stasis. And I'm alone. And she goes down. Now we'll be showing guys coming in trying to get a lot of damage. We'll be able to eat that threat. But they will lose Nautilus for as well. And the ponies going in. With that speed boost from the dragon, that's going to be a double kill going over to Lucian. And that is an ace for nothing aside from the support from this uh, blue side here. And they're going to take a bot lane inhibitor for it as well. It's too early on to try and stay here. Um, though they are going to back somewhat aggressively here looking for any possible catches they can find. But yeah, absolutely amazing. They're making use out of that. Uh, damage everybody has right now and with this back that's going to be coming their way with all the gold that's going to be spent here on this blue side as we see some of them uh, <laughs> cashing in right now absurd gold totals um, able to buy a lot of really critical items now and we're hitting a point to where you know we start to get concerned about if there's an opportunity for this red side to come back I mean they're now 14 and a half K gold down at this point uh, they did work some magic earlier on, did the red side with a two for nothing fight in their jungle, but uh, that might have been something that they can't replicate at this point any further now that they're uh, so far in the hole at this point. Good uh, sweeper there by Zed to clear out some of the vision. Uh, they're definitely going to want to clear out the vision in their jungle if they want to reclaim that and make that magic happen again. Unfortunately, looking at this ward here, oh excuse me, wrong button there gonna be just out of vision of the pink ward very painful to see that happen absolutely hate that brush for that exact reason um, but it looks like the blue side is going to be setting up for baron they know <clears throat> excuse me that bot lane is pushing in here and it is so far unanswered so that's gonna be baron started off here for this blue side team and 
And it looks like with Hecarim challenging that top lane, uh, there's not going to be anything they can really do about this. Uh, just diverting Hecarim and dealing with the bot lane supers are going to be plenty to try and deal with. Here. Zed looking to catch out that LeBlanc, but not able to do so. Hecarim turning on the speed in case he was needed, but going to be able to walk away from that no trouble here. And, you know, this is a, a power here of the uh, Hecarim who hits that Trinity Force spike a little bit sooner here since he's not going for that challenging smite. He is just opting for the Ignite Teleport. Get himself a little uh, extra kill potential in lane with that Ignite. And be able to hit his uh, damage item spikes a little bit sooner here. The Thresh can actually be hooking that all of a sudden in lane, but that uh, an turret doing work here. And a beautiful knockup from the Nautilus here, but that's so much damage coming out from the blue side. They're just too far behind. There's nothing this red side can do. And that is a 4 for 1, possibly a 4, a 5 for 1, but no, that's going to be the blue side backing off. They're just going to escort these variant up super minions into the base here and look to finish this game right now at 30 minutes. There's the first Nexus turret going down in Choga. So tanky, he's going to be okay, but uh, Forsage 1 is going to be coming up right as the Nexus goes down, and that is the first game going over to Amazon Prime here in this best of three series. And wow, this game definitely got out of control as we uh, see the gold totals again. Nearly 20k gold lead at the end in favor of Amaz Amazon Prime here. Beautiful play, really snowballing this game out of control in their favor. Uh, huge credit as well to that Jinx 8, 1, and 5. Had herself a QSS built as well uh, in case if that Zed decided to try and come after her. And, you know, overall, it was, there wasn't anything too disappointing from this team uh, on the red side, but there just wasn't anything super impressive either. I mean, that Cho'Gath definitely held his own. He's much more of a late-game oriented champion. Tried to get some more damage for his team. Went death cap. Uh, like we were talking about early on to try and bring that mixed damage threat and they certainly itemized against it here as we do see some MR coming out from multiple sources here. But in the end it wasn't enough. Um, as overall, I mean looking at this again, the CS discrepancy really tells the story here. LeBlanc uh, and Zed are very even lane. Cho'Gath and Hecarim are not. Uh, whereas the Solution and Tristana are not. So I think that's really what it comes down to. A lot of uh, really good, strong control here in the laning phase. And again, looking at these totals, LeBlanc put out a lot of damage here. But aside from LeBlanc, well, as I say that statement, you can never really say, aside from LeBlanc, <laughs> there wasn't too much damage because, of course, LeBlanc, 5 and 10 definitely not something to be uh, discounted. And, you know, when we talked about it during the pick ban phase, I mean, that Vi, LeBlanc, Thresh, these are all champions that are very comfortable for this team. And we see those champions performed very solidly in this game. Again, Vi, A1 and 5. Thresh, O3 and 16. LeBlanc, perfect game. Lucian, perfect game. We're going to need to see those bands swapped around here uh, to try and deal with this. Or perhaps even just a totally different comp idea coming out from this red side if they're going to want to get into this next game and be able to turn this series around. Because now they are on the bubble here. Uh, and this will be uh, the best of three. So they're going to have to win these next two games if they want to come back in this game. But uh, will, we're going to slam an end on this video so we can dive right into game two and not have our live streamers held waiting any longer now. Uh, but of course, if you are watching this in the archive, feel free to join us for the rest of the games of this series. Game two will be posted here uh, right after this one. So go ahead and check out the channel. And for all of this stuff, of course, go to the lovely website on your screen. Uh, after hours gaming.tv all the information is always posted there and without further ado we will be hopping into game two